What's up YouTube? Ride along with us as we explore the incredible Cape Lookout. We don't need a destination, let's go where the river's taking us. Hi, I'm Bill with Cottywampa Overland and this is Jeremy with x -Grid Campers. They have just opened a new facility in Knoxville, Tennessee and on June 24th Come and hang out with us there as they have their great open house. Yeah, so we call it a grand opening. We're going to have about 15 different trailers uh, uh, in the showroom. We've got about a 20,000 square foot facility. Uh, and we're going to have uh, live radio broadcast. We'll have uh, speakers and guests. All of our brands are going to be represented. So please come out and uh, come out and join us for the festivities. So in addition to campers, X-Grid not only does eight different manufacturers of campers, you can get iCamper there, you can get Bush Company, anything that you need overlanding, Knoxville, Tennessee at X-Grid Campers is going to be your overland go-to location for the East Coast. Our trip started early one morning at Matt and Don's house where we had to leave before daylight. This meant getting to watch the sun rise while we drove toward Davis, North Carolina. We had an early morning ferry scheduled with the Cape Lookout Ferry Service. When you get there to register, you may want to check out the store. They have all kinds of last minute provisions just in case you left something. In addition to Matt and Don, you may recognize this rig. This is Jeremy and Chris Long from x -Grid Campers. They also have a YouTube channel. While we waited for our ferry, we hung around, talked to several other people that were going over on the island, and took some time to start airing down tires. Right on schedule, if not a little bit before, we were leaving the mainland and wouldn't see it again for the next three days. As we made the 45 minute trip, I went ahead and aired my tires down to get ready for the sand on the beach. This was Aspen's first time on a boat. It took him a few minutes to get his sea legs under him, but it wasn't long at all and he was doing great. The skies were pretty cloudy, but the seas were pretty calm. There was a little bit of a breeze but the forecast was sunny skies over the next couple days and then a little bit of increased wind around day two. Before we knew it, we had made it onto the island. As soon as you get off the ferry, you've got to stop at the ranger station to get your decal for the beach. As soon as we got our permit, we were headed south on the beach in search for the perfect campsite. About a couple of miles or so before the lighthouse, we found a perfect spot to set up camp. We couldn't see anybody on either side of us. So this right here is how you set up a bathroom 
in a windstorm. After everything was set up, it was time for some much needed lunch and relaxation. At this point, it wasn't much about relaxation for Aspen. He was too busy playing in the sand. It was very relaxing for the rest of us, though. This was the first real camping shakedown run for the T-Van for Jeremy and Chris. So far, I think they're really liking it. This was also a chance for us to test some new equipment and old just to get things ready for the upcoming trip to Wyoming. And yes, that includes Deb's new cooking setup on the Expedition Voyager. After an early morning, a relaxing afternoon, an incredible dinner, it was time to sit around with friends and watch the sunset. The next morning after breakfast, it was time to get out and do some exploring. Our first stop was the beautiful and historic Cape Lookout Lighthouse. Pattern. Every one of them's got a different pattern, so they'll know from yeah. daylight where they're at. Yeah. Okay. 
After taking a step back in time at the lighthouse, we made our way back onto the beach in search of shells. The last time we were here, all the way down to the point, was the hot spot for shells, and that's where we began our search. But this time it was getting a little bit closer to lunch, so we decided to make our way back toward camp. But we had one stop that we wanted to make while we were on our way back, and that was at the lifeguard station. In addition to the lighthouse and the Coast Guard station, there are multiple other older structures along the south part of the island that you can explore. In addition to driving on the beach, there is a back road on the sand dunes that runs the entire length of the island. As we made it back to camp, the clouds started to thicken and the wind started to pick up. Knowing what was coming, we decided to fortify the upwind section of our camp to try to keep as much wind and sand as we could off of us. What are y'all doing? Oh, yeah. The wind was going to be blowing straight down the island, so we set up this barrier and stacked everybody in behind it. As we did this, the wind picked up and the sand began to blow. In addition to building the barrier and lining everybody up, we decided to put some of the awnings back up just in case they got blown away or around by the wind. In addition to lowering the awnings, Matt decided to move his Jeep around a little bit so that the wind would hit the hard side of his rooftop tent. We put all of the awnings down except for the Bush Company 270 XT Max. At this point, we thought we were as ready as we were going to be, and it was time to watch the wind blow the sand away and just sit back and enjoy.
As the sunset grew closer, the wind continued to pick up. A huge gourmet meal wasn't going to work for camp tonight. It was grab a sandwich and try to stay out of the sand. After sandwiches for dinner, we all huddled around the campfire and enjoyed the rest of the night the best we could as the temperatures continued to drop. According to Ohio. Yeah, they, it was like the county didn't claim that road anymore in their distance. After a very windy night, we woke up, got outside to check things out realized that our barrier had definitely worked, and now we know how sand dunes are made. This will be the morning that Jeremy and Chris had to leave us, and they were already trying to get things shaken out and packed up. This is a screenshot of the weather station from the island. The winds were actually higher than that at 12 o'clock. Packing the tea van up can normally be done with one person pretty easily, but with the amount of wind, we all decided to jump in and help Jeremy. After we got Jeremy and Chris packed up and made the, they made their way back toward the ferry, we decided to pack our stuff up and try to find a little better shelter. We'd really enjoyed the view of the beach, but at this point, it was a matter of comfort rather than scenery. We found a place to hold up in the long-term parking area just long enough to be able to grab something to eat without it getting full of sand and to check the weather for the day and tomorrow. After taking a good look at the weather, we realized that the wind was not going to let up until later tomorrow afternoon. We had planned on staying until tomorrow around noon but made a phone call to Cape Lookout Ferry, and they were gracious enough to be able to find us a place to get off of the island today. So that's what we did. We started making our way up the beach and on to the ferry to go find another campsite, maybe a little farther inland. They said they thought they could get us on around five, if not a little bit before. So we got there a little bit early and just hung out and waited for the next ferry that would be available for us. And as luck would have it, by four o'clock, they were putting us on a boat. These boat captains are true experts in what they do. They say that these boats can handle up to 50 knot winds. Now today, it was only gonna be about 20 or 25, so we were perfectly safe going across the sound. With the winds at 25 knots and white caps, as far as you can see, you can definitely see the vehicles rocking on the boat. And if 25 knots is like this, it would sure be a ride at 50. Once we made our way back onto the mainland, it was time to go a little farther inland to a place that we were somewhat familiar with but wanted to find a new campsite at. We were heading to the Croatan National Forest. We 
we found a really cool little spot to set up camp right beside Catfish Lake. The wind here was calm and it was the perfect place to set up for a large meal for the night. It was calm enough we even set up a real campfire for the night too instead of the propane fire pit. After an incredible meal, it was time to sit around, relax, enjoy the campfire and each other's company for another night. This has been a great trip and a really good shakedown run for some of our equipment for our upcoming trip to Wyoming. I hope you guys have enjoyed hanging out with us on the Cape Lookout and I hope you look forward to hanging out with us some more when we head to Wyoming. And don't forget, come to see us at the X-Grade Campers June 24th.